Now another update on the D.C. public school system and the work a new leader is doing to try to fix it. Our special correspondent for education, John Marrow, has been chronicling that effort, and here is his third report. What do we want? Our voice is heard. When do we want it? Now! Unions in Washington, D.C. are upset with school's chancellor, Michelle Rhee. What we have here is a takeover. It is not reform. It is dictatorship. Parents have their problems with her, too. Y'all telling these people that they got to take your plan. Let's be realistic about your plan, Ms. Reed. Even grandparents are angry. I'm telling you that you are not being serious about taking parent and community input into account. What goes through your head when people are yelling at you like that? I don't take that personally. Those people feel passionately about their schools and about public education. And frankly, we need more of that. You haven't done that you send your granddaughter. She's likely to get more in the months ahead. All right, tell them. Michelle Ree came into office in June, promising to make Washington, D.C. a national model of urban school reform. Now, seven months into the job, her controversial proposals close 15% of the schools and fire central office employees at will have stirred up a storm of protest. That raises a question. Is Michelle Rhee trying to do too much too fast? The time for dramatic change begins today. This man doesn't think so. Washington's mayor, Adrian Fenty, hired her. The person who says that they're going to come in, shake things up, change the system, challenge the status quo. That's exactly what I want. I was willing to stake in everything uh, on us shaking things up and trying to make the system as best as it could be for the children of the District of Columbia. Re wasted no time getting started. Weeks before the first day of school, she discovered thousands of textbooks and supplies, not in classrooms where they belonged, but gathering dust in a warehouse. She got them delivered to schools in time for opening day, and then went after the cause of the problem. The district's central office, long criticized for its inefficiency, re-asked the city council to pass a law giving her the power to fire central office employees at will. It is a matter of trust. It is a matter of trust. It's a matter of trust, trust because... Re met with city council members like Harry Thomas Jr., lobbying for votes. This has nothing to do with teachers. For a leader of an organization not to have the power to remove ineffective employees means that you are severely handcuffing that person um, and uh, putting up barriers to their effectiveness. This legislation is devoid of an educational impact plan for children at the classroom level. But pushback against no Rhee's proposal was immediate. At city council hearings, five labor unions spoke against the plan. And I come before you as an advocate for the more than 4,000 teachers that we have in D.C. public schools. Even though teachers would not be affected, teacher union president George Parker joined in. We believe that all workers should have due process rights. Um, I think the chancellor's legislation reaches a little too deep. Do you think Chancellor Rhee is in any way anti-union? Let me say this. Um, her statements in the past have not been very favorable to unions. Rhee's request for the power to fire office employees at will became an ongoing battle, one that the city council wouldn't decide until January. I mean, that was going to help. Um, now, now, In the meantime, Rhee tackled another complex problem, a deficit of $100 million. We spend more per pupil than almost any other urban jurisdiction does. And that's partially because we have a lot of our resources and money going into facilities that are a quarter full or a half full. We still have to give our very best to each other. In the past 10 years, enrollment has dropped by 27%. For example, this school was built for 400 students. It has 83. 
So we're essentially running twice as many schools as we ought to be. Based on studies of enrollment decline and neighborhood change, Rees' office developed a plan to close 15% of the schools under her control. She wanted to inform council members before going public, but someone leaked the list, and so the council read about it in the Washington Post. What did that do to you and to this plan and your relations with the council? Messed everything up. 